and believe that it takes a village to raise a child. But I also believe that it can take a child to raise a village. South Auckland young people are often described as chaotic, careless, irresponsible, irrational, impulsive, rebellious. And that's because they are. They're chaotic thinkers, careless innovators, irresponsible visionaries, irrational trendsetters, they're impulsive workers, and they're rebellious leaders that break stereotypes. I come from an iwi called Ngāti Teata. I was born here in this hospital and grew up in Waiuku, a small town, not too far away from here. And we lived rurally. There's my mum, my dad, my three siblings. But every opportunity I had, I spent at my grandparents' house. That's my cousins, my aunties, my uncles. We filled the lounge with mattresses every weekend. There was always fresh bread and there was always something boiling away on the stove. My grandparents were more comfortable speaking Māori than English, so we learnt Māori pretty much as soon as we could start talking. And all of my schooling was done in total immersion Māori until I hit high school. I went to an intermediate school where my uncle was the principal, my uncle was the teacher. The whole row had 18 students, one eight, not 80. And they were all my cousins, if not my siblings. And we did things at this school that other schools probably didn't do. We frequently went fishing, white baiting, kite fishing, we did waka ama. The parliamentary walks for the foreshore and seabed. We spent time in the environment court for iwi matters. My upbringing, a lot of it was spent in vans waiting for my mum to come out of iwi meetings. So te reo Māori, my marae and my iwi had a huge part in my upbringing. Last year, my cousins and I came together to think about what we could do for the iwi. What could we do as the chaotic, irresponsible and rebellious young people that we are? We started having weekly meetings at each other's houses and allowed ourselves to think big, to dream, to think about what we could do, what could we do for the tribe. We had heaps of ideas and one of the first ones that we thought was achievable was to run a day where everyone could come back to the marae and we'd teach them how to white bait and how to serve it up for the whanau. We realised pretty quick that to do anything we needed a bit of cash, so we ran around to whanau's houses, forced them to buy a lotto ticket, raised a bit of money and we were away. We ran this white bait day, we had 50 whanau that came from Auckland, from Hamilton and just wanted the ability to reconnect. And to be able to do that felt pretty cool. So we continued doing things. We ran a Computers and Homes program where Fano got a free computer and half price internet. We ran a learner's licence driving course and then a couple hundred bucks. But we'd only made a tiny dent in, in the things that we wanted to achieve. One of the big things we wanted to do was to have a youth space at our marae, a place where youth could come together, run projects, share ideas, but how do you just build a youth space? We looked for some funding. We were able to utilise an, an, an old part at our marae that, that was kind of used as a storage area. And then I needed a builder. So I put this post out on Facebook and asked if anyone knew a good builder. And one of my cousins came back to me and said that he would do it. And this was a bit of a surprise because it, it wasn't a cousin that I was very close to. I knew him but I didn't really know him. And from what I'd heard, he wasn't an angel. Um, anyone that was to look at him would think he was pretty tough, intimidating, someone you definitely wouldn't want to mess with. But he was an impulsive worker and a rebellious leader that motivated others. I went back out to the marae about a week later and there were about 10 young boys who were helping to build this space, completely voluntarily. Not one of them, even this cousin, would accept a dime. One day, two of the boys came, and they were a little bit later than usual to help build, and it was because they'd spent the morning at court. 
they'd come straight from court to volunteer to build at their marae. Anyone looking at them that morning in front of the courtroom would think that they were chaotic, irresponsible, all of those things. But anyone watching them as they voluntarily built this use space for three weeks, and anyone watching them as they walked onto the stage in the parliamentary banquet hall to receive an award from the Minister for Youth for this contribution would have a completely different view. It was an amazing experience to watch these boys contribute. So an initial conversation from young people about what they could do for their iwi has now turned into a beautiful, vibrant space where young people can come together, share their ideas, run projects, share kai, with the aim of creating the next generation of future leaders. So I stand here before you 10 months after that very first meeting that we had. Our organisation has been in operation for two and a half months now. We've been able to take 13 young people to Parliament to receive two national awards. We're just about to hire our fourth staff member. We've been able to gain almost half a million dollars worth of funding. And we continue to do our weekly youth meetings and we continue to run youth lead projects for the community and for the iwi. Because we could think unrestrained and irrationally and have these impulsive, rebellious actions, this organisation has been able to exist. And yes, it's making an impact for young people, but it's also impacting their siblings, their parents, their grandparents, the community, the village. So this is the capability of young people. And this is how a child can raise a village. Kia ora.